Hey everyone, it's Anastasia. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to talk about straw wars. I'm talking about Starbucks. So today I'm going to share with you why do I like to drink with a straw and not giving it up. I'm not digging the band. I got to be straight up with you. Why some people need the straw to drink and what we can learn from companies who are doing something about recycling. All right, so let's start with the straw. So clearly, coffee chat with Anastasia. I got my Starbucks cup. I'm drinking my coffee with my straw. The reason I do, three reasons. Number one, drinking through a straw with tea, coffee, soda, certain juices, it delays the stain on my teeth. Purely cosmetic, it delays the stain on my teeth. Now, number two, the reason I do it is back in the 90s, I was a tooth whitening aholic. Okay, I used the highest strength, I did it for more than I should have, have sensitive teeth. The older I get, have a little bit of recession, not much, but a little. So even at a millimeter where my root of my tooth is exposed, I'm having tooth sensitivity, which is sensitive to temperature changes. Lukewarm water, hot coffee to unsweet iced tea. So to me, instead of drinking in pain, it's easier to drink through a straw, okay? Convenience. Third thing, I'm a germaphobe. So when we go out to restaurants, I don't like to drink off of the rim of the glasses, okay? It, ju it just does, okay? You know, Howie Mandel likes to fist pump. Anastasia likes to have a straw. It's not a bad thing, all right? So don't judge. There are people who are living with disabilities that need a straw to drink. So if you're in a hospital, you're going to need a straw to drink. If you have dexterity issues, if you have Parkinson's, or I can't remember what my mom had, but she did, her hands would shake um, a little bit. It's harder. You're not gonna get a sippy cup to go there. You, um, Bell's palsy, Maybe you're recovering from a stroke. There's a lot of, of disabilities where you would need a straw to drink. In saying that, depending upon your income with disabilities, plastic is easier for you to get and afford. So if this is gonna be a wave of something, we have to look at the big picture. We're talking about metal straws, people are talking about glass straws, and I think that's awesome, but I will tell you, Certain people on certain incomes are not going to do that. So, you know, I just mentioned the disabilities. For myself, I carry just a wallet with me most of the time here in St. Petersburg. So what, is that gonna be small and then it just pipes out? How is that gonna work? How do you sterilize it? How, does, how do restaurants sterilize it? And as far as metal and glass, how am I gonna get that bad boy through TSA? Is it gonna be a weapon? Is it gonna be a weapon? Because being the klutz that I am, it would be a weapon. I'll tell you why. It would pierce my heart. If I fall, it would pierce my lung. It would pluck up my eye. Although, I could do an emergency tracheotomy like Sandra Bullock did in the movie The Heat. I could do that. I could do that. You could trust me. Bringing it home, the message here is instead of coming from a company who trains their team on diversity and treating human beings as human beings and being tribe-centered, learn from companies like Colgate, like P&G, as to what they're doing to recycle plastic toothbrush handles. So let me give you this fact. People are supposed to go through two to three toothbrushes a year, okay? So I'm 51, let's just gauge it by age two. My parents started with brushing my teeth with a toothbrush. I have already used 149 toothbrushes. That's just me. In the United States alone, 50 million pounds of toothbrushes, that's one billion, are filling up our landfills in the United States alone. So Colgate decided to um, I think it's ShopRite. I'll include the, the screenshot here for you. That if you send in their toothbrush, your toothpaste, you send in their toothbrushes, that they will recycle them. And the winners are going to be communities, playgrounds, plastic, basically recycled type of gardens. This is amazing because they're community centric. They're getting the community together to recycle something, saying, saying we're banning, ban toothbrushes, sorry. Tooth decay for everybody, gum disease for everyone. Let's come together, Starbucks, and think about that. Diversify and come from abundance. So my challenge to you would be, um, like P&G, they said their um, head and shoulders shampoo, I believe, is now in containers that is biodegradable. Hats off, P&G! Another toothbrush company that's recycling, has an incentive program, is called Gimme Five. So check these out, I'll include them in the description here on YouTube. This is something that we can learn from. Finally, the straw that breaks the camel's back. Straw wars. Plastic is 
Darth Vader. Plastic is the enemy. We know what happened to the turtle. Here, you can see the basin behind me. St. Petersburg has dumped over five, in the past five years sewage into our water, into Tampa Bay, into our drinking water. So I'm going to encourage you. We've got to come to a political way. We're not the only city or town in the United States. We have to make our water, drinking water systems strong with the growing communities, the growing buildings, because we have fish in there. We have dolphin in there. We have manatee. The pelicans eat the fish. This is a complete cycle where you have viruses and bacteria that are deadly. Until we clean up our water systems, it is not gonna matter how many straws we save. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. Let me know what you think and if you're doing anything in your community to recycle plastics and straws. Like this channel, join me every single week, and until next Wednesday, take what you learn and make a difference with it.